Hey, this is the Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about private corporate apps. All right, I want to start out today by addressing two uh, questions from yesterday. Well, one of them's a question, one of them's a comment. First of all, the comment, um, UB says, you know you say you know a lot you know, throughout the video. I, I guess I say you know all the time, and I know I do, I try not to, but uh, and I kept thinking, I kept thinking I'm going to not say that at all during this video. And this is the third time going through because every time I would say, you know, and that's it. Screw it. I'm just going to say, you know, so I'm sorry about that. But, you know, you know. So second question. So, so UB, I just hope you get used to it. I say, you know, and I say like. So I think it must be a nervous condition or something. Uh, so the second question is from my videos 963 saying, hi, just wondering if you ever created an app that could be used only by corporations. Yes, we have. We've done it quite a few times. So there's different ways of handling this. First of all, you got the, the Android way. And I think Google Play has some way of doing corporate apps like they have a private app store. We've never done that. When we do a, a private application for corporations, all we do is we'll just compile the APK, sign it, and send it to them. Uh, that's the nice thing about Android is you could just do that. You just, you know, and they can handle telling their, all their users how to go into the security settings and saying allow third party and all that kind of stuff. And then they can distribute it however they want. Now with Apple, it's a lot, it's a lot more difficult because you have to do all the signing and the distribution certificates and everything. So usually when we get corporate clients, the first thing we, what I try to do is convince them that let's just put it on the app store. We'll put a login and password. It's much easier, you know, less, less hassle and everything like that. And, uh, and sometimes they'll say, no, they, they actually don't want it on the app store. Their fear is that somebody will just go in and see it and then download it. And even though they have a password, they'll, they'll kind of see what the app is all about. And of course, you and I know as app developers that, you know, it's not that easy. You know, if only people just went and downloaded things just for no reason. You know, we have to like really work hard to get them down there. So, so there's two different ways that we've done this. I don't know if there's any others. I think these are the only two ways for Apple. So the first one is the um, enterprise distribution program. So this is more like for companies like corporate developers. So like when I was working in investment banks, the kind of stuff that I would do where uh, they have a, an iTunes account or you know, Apple developer account for distribution and you could like build an application and sign it with this key and it could only be used for their own internal iPhone. So the ones that, 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 that they've set up. So, and then they could distribute it however they want. They could send the IPA file, all this kind of stuff. And at least I think that's how it works. So the way we worked in the past is that the client would contact us and say, you know, they have this distribution certificate and because we're not part of their organization, they just, they would export the P12 file so that we can build it and send them the IPA file and then they handle it from there. Um, so it's, it's, it's much, it's much easier that way, but it's also difficult to do all the testing. Like every time you do a new version, you have to go and bring that in and, and send it all, all that kind of stuff. So usually when, just so you know, when we have clients, what we'll do is we'll build on our own. So we'll do use test flight on our own systems and we'll send them their builds. And then when it, time, when it comes time to go live and we're, we're happy with everything, at that point, we'll change all the namespaces, we'll change the package, package ID, and then we'll put it onto their account. And then only mess with that at, at the final stage. And then that way we still use our account for you know testing and if they want a new feature, we could use that as a staging environment you know, pretty much. Uh, now the other way of doing the Apple distribution uh, program, or sorry, distributing to corporations, it, it's much easier. It's called the volume purchasing program. And what this is is that uh, companies, what they could do is enroll in this VPP program, volume purchasing, volume purchasing program, and they can add their phones to it and then they could buy apps for their organization. And then you as a developer, what you could do is, is create their application, put it onto the app store. And when you go to that pricing and distribution page, there's a little option there that says, uh, you know, B2B private apps. And you could just, if you select that, you could just put in the email address of that organization or the, whatever they've registered their account with. So their you know, account ID. So we have this on a, on a few different clients. So you know, they go into the app store just like normal, but only they're allowed to see this app. And it's so much easier I sounded like Trump just then so much easier. Uh, it's so much easier for them to, to handle all that kind of stuff. So, uh, and then when they want a, like a new feature or maybe a bug like we had last week, we could just, you know, put that out there and, and we don't have to worry about, you know, telling all their clients to get it. So that goes through the whole, you know, processing thing. It, it is a much, much easier way. Now, I know a lot of you guys don't do work for clients and, and some of you do. And I think this is an area that, 
has a lot of opportunity in the future. This is one of the reasons why I still do client work a bit. Uh, if you're somebody who, who works well with, with, uh, with meetings and with people and you're really good with handling scope creep and really good at saying no and really good at you know assuring clients then you know there's a lot of opportunity out there i i i'm not really good at a lot of those things but we still would get by uh yeah it's it's kind of like i think about the web in its early days where it, it, the early days of the web there were some people out there just getting rich and there was all this enthusiasm about you know my my dot com website and everything and then there was like people like me who was working in a in an investment bank building websites or transactional you know, web applications for just within use within their company. So there's so many you know, companies out there that haven't fully embraced apps yet. You know, they, they, you know, they, they may have dabbled in it, they may have been looking into it, but there's so much out there. To give you an example, uh, a few months ago somebody called me, I may have told you about this before, somebody called me up saying you know, they do door-to-door -door sales or something or surveys. Uh, and they they still do the clipboard. They have to ask for the bank details of the person. So you know all this kind of stuff. And he was saying, "Do you think an app would be better at this?" And we started just talking about it. just talking about it. it. Was like, "Oh yeah, actually, you could do an app. You could you know you could have it save locally. And even if they don't have an internet connection where they are, it could save it locally until they do have an internet connection. Or you know get back to the office and sync on their internet. You can have the the images there at at their disposal. You could if they need to take surveys, they could take pictures where they are, whatever." Uh, you got GPS coordinates, all this kind of stuff, and we start talking about it, and it's it's so much better than pen and paper. And when you look around, there's so much things out there that are still like this. It's just people haven't taken that leap. But having said that, client work is a lot more difficult than just doing your own stuff. I mean, that, I mean while my goal is that our own apps generate enough revenue for us to to thrive off of, there's still this big opportunity that I'm not quite ready to let go. And that's why we do some client work, but we're very, very choosy about it at the moment. So if you, you know, if you do work for corporates, uh, uh, you know, corporate clients and learn how that enterprise distribution program works, learn how that volume purchasing program works. And you could go out there and, and, and per, you know, pitch yourself to some of these, these big organizations. I mean, there's, there's I, I just think there's loads of opportunity out there. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.